In 1980, Helen Harris came across a small article in a local Rochester, New York newspaper that mentioned Dr. Manuel Del Cerro and his controversial new work on medical research called stem cell transplantation. She met with him, discussed the stem cell as a potential cure for the blindness that was affecting her, her children, and approximately 20 million others. She realized that this process was probably the only thing that would regenerate and restore eyesight and began searching for more information regarding the transplantation of cells, not only for blindness, but for any disease such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and other neurological disorders that are currently incurable. Her belief was and still is that if stem cells could be used to cure Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, it would definitely cure blindness. Helen put Dr. Del Cerro together with six other doctors to form the first ever stem cell transplantation team. Over the next 10 years, they worked relentlessly to try to get funding for this process. In 1984, Helen donned surgery scrubs and was present in the operating room at LSU, where Dr. Golan Payman took cells from the peripheral part of the female patient's own eye and inserted them into her macular, the central part of the eye, in hopes of restoring her vision. Remarkably, the patient regained her eyesight and suddenly her world of darkness was filled with a glimmer of light. During a follow-up visit with the patient a year after her procedure, the woman was crystal clear about her vision. She said she could see nothing before the surgery, and now she had enough of her eyesight back to thread a needle or to read print. I think the first time I realized that I could see out of my eye was at night, coming from my son's house. I could see the lights on the shopping center, and I got excited. I feel like if my knees were as good as my eyes, I'd have it made. Yet in spite of her miraculous transformation, she had been harassed by the neighbors and newspapers making uninformed comments about her fetal cell abortion eyes, dog cell eyes, and her Frankenstein surgery. All of this was very, very far from the truth. Helen knew they had begun to shatter the outdated mentality that degenerative diseases were incurable. However, the next year, the lab at LSU was slowly dismantled. The funds were distributed to a different part of the university. It's no secret that large donors will sometimes withdraw their funding to distance themselves from controversial procedures taking place in an institution that they support. At that time, no one went to Arvo to discuss cell transplant because brilliant American eye doctors, scientists, researchers, and ophthalmologists were being labeled voodoo medicine men by far too many. Over the years, Helen has met with doctors and researchers regularly, and as they began to gain more hope about their work, they became less shy about discussing it in front of each other. They truly believe that stem cells will cure retinitis pigmentosa and that it will be the future cure for many other diseases. Dr. Payman recently said, Helen, had anyone listened to you 20 years ago, RP would be cured by now. Let's not let another year go by where the stem cells get set aside. We need to make sure funds go to the right doctors and the right universities where people are taken off the waiting list and put on the operating table. This is what RP International did for Todd Heritage. When Todd was brought up on stage at the Vision Award several years ago, he had been blind for 22 years. But with the stem cell implant, Todd got back 100% of his eyesight. The process was entirely supported by ABC Television and his own eye doctor, who had the ability and courage to perform the adult stem cell transplant. Todd's doctor did not suffer the same repercussions that other scientists had suffered during a past time when stem cell research didn't fit into the media criteria or the mindset of individuals who held the purse strings of progress in medical research. He's never seen his wife or his kids before, and he'll be able to see his children for the first time. You open it? Oh my God. See? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Good. nice to see you guys. See <laughs> Thanks, those guys. Huh? Those dimples. You are just beautiful. Come on, you can't give me a hug. Oh, you're beautiful too. <laughs> 
freaking me out. I just wanted to just grab him and look at him and just oh, hold him forever. Look at those big, beautiful blue eyes. Today, stem cell has become a household word. We can only hope that those who are getting hundreds of millions of dollars in stem cell laboratories around the country use it in the spirit that it was allocated and that they will find a cure for these terrible diseases. The progress of stem cell research is the outcome of great efforts made by a fearless tiny few who resisted the name calling, the ostracizing, and all the negative name tags. We found the cure. Now we need to make sure we get the funding. One of my eyes now sees nothing, and the other one sees very little. And I can tell you that if you can pierce the darkness with any kind of spot of light at all, it brings you back to a place in the world that would make that transplant worthwhile. Even if you couldn't read again, and even if you couldn't see a face clearly again, it still would be wonderful to get on the other side of the darkness.